guys here at the top of the Spanish Steps, we are going to take a walk through the historic center of Rome. So this is the perfect walk to see Rome in a day, but without the Colosseum or the Vatican. Or it's ideal for those of you who are following my three-day itinerary on RomeWise. So on that itinerary, we include this walk, which I call the Reconnaissance Walk, and you've got the Colosseum on another day and the Vatican on another day. So this would be one of those three days. Now, Rome may seem like a big city, but in fact, on this walk, we are gonna cover so many of the most important must-see historical sites that you want to see when you visit Rome. This walk can take either a half a day or a whole day, depending on your pace and some of the stops you might make along the way. So on this walk, I'm going to follow the Google map that I have created for you, and you'll find a link for that below. But I'm also going to show you some of my secret spots and favorite things to do along the way. Now, depending on how you do this walk, it could also be considered a completely free walk. However, I do suggest you have some money with you so you can eat and drink along the way and you might want to have some spare change so that if you go inside of a church and you want to light up a chapel, you can light up the chapel that you want to see. You might also notice that I am wearing a backpack. This is so that I can keep my hands free so I can film and talk to you, but I like to keep my hands free anyway so I can grab some water, I can carry my phone or my camera. I think a backpack is a great way to go around Rome. Just make sure it's a normal size backpack because most sites like the Vatican, the Colosseum, the Pantheon, etc., they will not let you in with large camping-like backpacks. Where pickpocketing is concerned, just be aware of your surroundings and your belongings as you walk around Rome. So from here, we have the option of walking straight down the steps, which is a good option if you are limited on time. But the piece that I'm going to take you with me on right now, going to the Pincho and Piazza del Popolo in Via Marcuta, is a great option for those of you who are looking for a little bit of quiet time and quiet space because once we get down into the historic center where Pantheon and Piazza Navona are, it's going to be pretty busy. So let's head over to the Pincho. Here we go. haven't had your morning coffee yet or if it's lunchtime, you may want to stop here at Champini at the top of the Spanish Steps because it is a beautiful place to grab a snack or a coffee or even lunch. It's not, you know, gourmet food, but it is an incredible location with a stunning view. Are you traveling with kids? Are you looking for some leisure time, some downtime? You could just stop here in the beautiful Villa Borghese Park. It's a huge park. You can walk around, you can sit down. There's a lake, there are bike rentals. There's lots to do here and plenty of things for kids as well. A carousel, a puppet show. So if you want a little bit of a break from the hustle down there, the Villa Borghese Park is a great stop. Otherwise, let's keep going. This part of Rome is called the Pincian Hill. It is not one of the original seven hills of Rome, but it was, of course, around during the time of the Roman Empire. Julius Caesar had gardens up here. So it is part of ancient Rome as well as present day Rome. And it offers us the beautiful Borghese Park, as well as a gorgeous overlook above Piazza del Popolo with a stunning view of St. Peter's Basilica in the background. If you're doing this walk later in the day, you might be lucky enough to catch the sunset from up here. It is absolutely fantastic. Once you've had your view over Piazza del Popolo, we're actually going to head right down there. Believe it or not, this is not actually the best photo spot for uh, a view because somehow it all gets lost because it's too far down. So save the photos for another spot. Now we've reached Piazza del Popolo and there are a couple of optional stops that you might want to make.
I'm standing here in the Porta Flaminio because I wanted to show you behind me Piazza del Popolo with that giant obelisk. That obelisk used to stand in the spine of the Circus Maximus in ancient Rome. Emperor Augustus brought it here as a spoil of war when he defeated Anthony and Cleopatra at the Battle of Actium in 31 BCE. I really recommend a visit to this church. It is stunning and there are Caravaggio paintings, Bernini sculptures, Raphael, Pinturicchio, and much more. Here's a curious fact about Piazza del Popolo. If you ask just about anybody, Romans included, they will tell you that the word popolo stands for people, which it does. But in the case of this piazza, it is not piazza of the people. In this case, the word popolo stands for poplar trees. So this is piazza of the poplar trees. So why is this called piazza of the poplar trees if there are no poplar trees anywhere in sight? So Emperor Nero, Rome's fifth emperor. There are a lot of adjectives we can use to describe him. You may remember him from the Domus Aurea video that I did for you. In any case, he fell out of favor with the Senate and he was forced to leave Rome and commit suicide. Needless to say, he was not given an emperor's burial. He was cremated and his ashes were stored in this space up here. There was a sort of a potter's field where People were buried if they didn't have anybody to claim them or people like uh, <laughs> fallen emperors. Now in the year 1100, which we can consider uh, the Middle Ages, there were a lot of rooks that were hanging out in these poplar trees around here where Nero was buried. And the rooks, birds, blackbirds, they were just cawing all the time. And the people thought that it was Nero's ghost coming to hunt them. So the Pope at that time built the church that I just showed you, Santa Maria del Popolo, and they threw Nero's ashes into the Tiber River. The church was eventually embellished and it is the beautiful church that you see today from the Renaissance. And obviously those poplar trees, the rooks and Nero's ashes are long gone. But this, this is Piazza del Popolo, Piazza of the Poplar Trees. I'm standing in front of the Hotel de Russie on Via del Babuino. Now, for those of you who feel like a little bit of a splurge, whether it's morning and you want to get a coffee, or it's late afternoon, you want to get an aperitivo, this is one of my favorite oases in Rome. It is not cheap, but it is a beautiful place to stop for a refreshment. Guys, I've never been on this street and seen more than 20 people. Usually it's about 10, <laughs> including me. So as you can see, it is a beautiful, quiet, serene, elegant street. It's also considered an artist street. So in November, there is an art show here and sometimes other times during the year. It's also full of art galleries of all different types. So it's a beautiful place to come window shop or even shopping shopping. One great place to stop on this street is Il Marmoraro, where you can get some really unique and interesting souvenirs and gifts. Okay guys, we have reached the end of the quiet part of our walk today. The Pincho and Via Marguta are two very beautiful quiet spots as you have seen, but now we are going to head to the bottom of the Spanish Steps and you're going to notice it's going to start getting a lot more crowded. Let's go. Well guys, I chose to film this to you right when they are promoting the latest Mission Impossible movie. So as you can see, the Spanish tabs are not exactly how I would have shown them to you. So here's a clip from another moment of the year. I've done a video for you about how to get from the Trevi Fountain to the Spanish Steps. On this walk, we are going from the Spanish Steps to the Trevi Fountain. It's really close by, so let's go. 
Here's another optional stop for you, the beautiful church of Sant'Andrea delle Fratte. Inside, you can see two beautiful sculptures of angels by Gian Lorenzo Bernini. These were used as models for the angel bridge that leads to Castel Sant'Angelo. Midway between the Spanish Steps and the Trevi Fountain is the Rinascente department store behind me. This is a perfect spot if you want to take a quick break to do some shopping, cool down, or head to the roof for some refreshments. Yeah, it's a bit crowded. If you want to see the Trevi Fountain without the crowds, you've got to come in the winter or really early in the morning, like before seven o'clock. Guys, there is a hashtag, not the Pantheon. This building behind me is the Temple of Hadrian, the Hadrianeum, but it is not the Pantheon. We are going to go see that in just a few minutes from here. Well guys, my favorite monument in Rome. You could easily just see it from the outside if you don't have the time, you don't feel like going inside, but I really do recommend a visit inside if you have the time. I've taken a little bit of a detour from the Pantheon to Piazza Navona because I wanted to bring you here to Piazza Sant'Eustacchio. Besides the beautiful church of the same name and the gorgeous Boromini spiral on the Church of St. Ivo that you can see from the piazza, this is a great place to stop for refreshments. Piazza Sant'Eustacchio is the perfect stop because it has the trifecta of perfect snacks. You've got Gunther Gelato, one of my top 10. You've got Zaza Pizza, probably my favorite pizza by the slice, and Cafe Sant'Eustacchio, one of the most famous, if not the best places to get a coffee here near the Pantheon. just filled up on some of that gorgeous water at the Fountain of the Books. And we are about to head to Piazza Navona, which is maybe a three, maximum five minute walk from the Pantheon. But first I wanna show you a very special thing that you can stop and see along the way. many people, Piazza Navona would be a stopping point. We've covered quite a lot of ground. Campo di Fiori is just across from us and the Jewish ghetto is right near that, so you could explore those things on today's walk, but for many people that would be a separate day. If you've got some energy and some time and you want to see a little bit more, there are a couple more places that we could include on this walk, so let's go check them out and then you can decide for yourself. So we have reached Piazza Venezia and the Complesso Vittoriano, also sometimes affectionately nicknamed the wedding cake. I've got a page all about that and if you want to check out how you can visit it and see some of the beautiful views from up there, visit my page on the website. You also may decide that you'd like to climb up Campidoglio and get some of the beautiful views of the Forum from there or visit the Capoline Museums. Considering the walk we've just done, those would be ambitious things to do, but for those turbo visitors of you, you can fit those in if you like. My watch is telling me that I've been walking for two hours, so from the top of the Spanish Steps, that whole loop that we did took me two hours with hardly any stops. I really just stopped to film for you and uh, take a couple of sips of water, but that's about it. So that's why I say this could be a half day or more likely a full day walk. 
From here, we are very close also to the Trevi Fountain, and from there, the Spanish Steps. So if you wanted to bring it full circle, that would take you another 15 or 20 minutes. If you'd like to know more about my three-day itinerary and how this walk fits in with that, you can check out my page on the website. You can also download my ebook below. And if you're looking for more walking itineraries in Rome, check out my playlist right here.